Welcome back to our chapel chat for Friday, June 26th. Father Joy, do you want to do the gospel? This is from Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospels, there's all sorts of different kinds of faith that people approach Jesus with. Uh, here, Jesus is in the crowd, or this leper is in the crowds, approach, does him homage, and says, if you wish, that is, if you, if, if you want, you can make me clean. So he believes Jesus has the power to do it. Like, I know you can do it. If you wish, if you want to do it, you can do it. Uh, on the one hand, that seems to be pretty like uh, basic faith. Like, of course, everyone knows, well, God mm -hmm. can do anything, right? And so it's not the highest faith, where just uh, like the faith of, of the centurion or the expectant faith of the Syrophoenician woman, right? Um, but it, but it's, it's a form of faith nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And Jesus does say, he says in response, I will do it or uh, I, I will it, right? Uh, and one of the things we need to remember in the midst of this the broken world in which we live and in the world in which we're going to in heaven Jesus does desire often to heal us. Mm -hmm. And he desires to heal us when we approach him asking for healing. Right? So the leper comes to Jesus, he approaches, he does him homage, and he says that, and Jesus responds, I do. He stretched out his hand. Yeah. What what fascinates me is what is the hand of Jesus? It's the church. Hmm. If the church refuses to stretch out her hand, yeah. the people that come to Jesus will never experience healing. Yeah. Right? Because I think that's a very interesting thing. He stretched out his hand and touched him and said, well, why does it say that? Why does he just say, um, he placed his hand on him and said, I heal. Like, there's an there's a intentional movement of Jesus, yeah. and we are Jesus. Yeah. And if we're not intentionally moving toward people that are sick, maybe they won't experience the cleaning and healing power of Jesus. Yeah. I think it's interesting that it makes that a point of noting the physical contact, which would have been scandalous for the Jews, right? Because lepers were unclean. And if you were to touch a leper, you'd become unclean. And you could get leprosy, not to mention. But Jesus didn't pay any attention to any of that. He stretched out his hand. He touched him. And it reminds me of, I, some, I think, something we're all realizing during this lockdown is the need for that human-to-human -human mm. interaction. Mm -hmm. Nothing can replace it. Skype doesn't replace it. FaceTime doesn't replace it. We need that physical contact with each other because we're made to be yeah. communal people. Yeah. And that's what's been so difficult about the lockdown is a lot of that has been completely eliminated. And, and even in the church, right, we, we locked down for several months here and people were not able to come here. But Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I will do it. And it's just such a beautiful scene, right? You can just imagine this. Jesus just finished the Sermon on the Mount. He's coming down from the mountain. Great crowds are following him. There's all this joy and this excitement, this expectation. And then maybe off to the side, there's this leper. Mm -hmm. an outcast, someone who's not supposed to be around people. They're supposed to stay at a distance, mm -hmm. right? So he's already stepping out in this, this act of faith by approaching because he knows he's not supposed to, but he's trusting that Jesus is going to understand what, what he's doing. And, and, and who, who knows what Jesus could have done? All sorts of different things, but he immediately just says, yes, I will do it. Mm -hmm. Be made clean. And, and I can think of the, the times when this is exactly where the evil one loves to mess with us because we're all lepers. We're all broken. We all have sins or things that we want to hide from others or hide from Jesus. And the, the evil one is right there saying, yeah, you don't want to go to him. He's not mm -hmm. going to forgive mm -hmm. you. He's not going to make it better. Just, just stay back off on the side without anyone. But no, Jesus wants us to come to him. He's, his mercy is abundant. He already knows our hearts. He already knows the worst about us. He just wants us to come to him so that he can reach out and say, yes, be made clean. Yeah, and precisely in the place of our, of our leprosy, right? I mean, the lepers would make other people unclean, mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus makes lepers clean. Mm. So as in the old law, the lepers would, would render everyone unclean, but Jesus is the one, when you touch him, he renders you clean, yeah. right? And that's the, that's the way 
that Jesus operates. And so, yeah. as you were saying, that the shame, I mean, how often does shame or brokenness or sickness or just the ugliness that we sometimes see in ourselves, yeah. like, man, why would that even, why would I even consider doing that? Or yeah. what, 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 was, what was that? Yeah. He, he, Jesus wants us to approach him in that so he can purify us. Right. But the enemy uses that against us. Yeah. Right. So the very thing, and I, I, I sometimes say this to people, the very thing that causes you the most shame is the very thing that Jesus is attracted to the most. Yeah. It's the very thing he wants to be there with you in. It's the very thing that he wants to love you there, like love you in, because yeah. that sets us free. Yeah. And I also often think that's the very kind of faith that we often need. Mm-hmm. It's not just physical healing, but we need faith to say, to, in our leprosy, to bow down to Jesus and to approach him, you can make me clean. And how much he desires to clean our hearts how much He desires to purify us and to make us new. And He's not ashamed of us. Yeah. He's not disappointed us. He just loves us. Yeah. And what a, what a profound difference that is from an isolationist kind of approach to ritual purity that mm-hmm. existed in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. God has come to draw near to us to make us whole. Yeah. I think it's interesting how at the end, this could be lost on us because you know, we don't follow Mosaic law anymore, but... Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. This will be proof for them. So that was part of the Mosaic law. If you were, if you were cleansed from your leprosy somehow, if you were healed in some way, you had to go and, and the priest would declare you clean. You made a little, little offering. But it's like their reunion with the community. Now they are part of the community once again. And it shows us that Jesus wants us to live our faith with each other. Faith is not a... F- just a me and yeah. Jesus thing. It's not something I do in isolation all on my own, but it's really meant to be done with others. And that's the beauty of all of these groups we have at the parish, you know, Bible studies or, or men's groups, women's groups. It's something that's very important in our priesthood, you know, our, our, our fraternity groups with brother priests. God wants us to walk in our faith together because in, in those communities, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of grace that God really brings and, and just wisdom and and he wants us to be doing this all with one another, side by side. One of the common themes that are brought, that is brought up by scripture scholars and commentators on on leprosy is the isolation that lepers experienced, and yeah. the, it's almost the social worse isolation. Than the disease. It's almost yeah. They'll say yeah. like that's it was such a suffering part of the or part of the disease that su- that caused them so much suffering. And I think of the church. Who are who is the church treating as a leper? Yeah. Like you think of our parish. Who is unwelcome? Who is unclean? Who is not welcome to come and be a part of our parish or, or maybe are part of our group or whatever? I mean, I've heard stories where, you know, people are coming to the church, they want to be involved, and people just isolate them. Yeah. They're not one of us, you know, yeah. and they get isolated. And such people aren't attracted. Yeah. Notice that Jesus, Jesus will often reach out. I mean, the, the ten lepers approach him in, in Luke's gospel. Right, he he'll reach out to them. He'll he'll engage with them, and just how often in the church we just disengage because yeah. we don't want to be like them. Yeah. Well, when we're thinking like that, we're not thinking like Jesus. Yeah. We can be sometimes afraid that the leprosy is going to come to us. Yeah. Rather than being confident, know that we have the we have the cure to that leprosy. Yeah. We have the love that makes pure. Right. Right. Instead of like having the offensive posture, but the only way to see that is to see through Jesus's eyes, Amen. which we're constantly be invited into. Yeah. So let us close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to cleanse us of our leprosy, to cleanse us of all the, uh, the filth and the guilt and the, and the sin that we have accrued in our hearts and our lives. We thank you for desiring to do it. That you, We know that you do will it. That every time that we fall, every time we, we struggle, we get back up and we, do you, we give you homage and we know that you will to make us clean. We ask, Lord, that you transform our hearts. Help us to remember that you are the solution to every problem. You are the answer to every question. That you are the one that has the power to bring people and to bring all of us back into community again. We ask that you change our hearts that we might not see other people as problems, other people as lepers, but we might open our hearts to them and welcome them back into your community and back to worship. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.